chilly temperatures and a possibility of rain will greet two teams headed in opposite directions, the surging 3-2 Cowboys against the slumping 1-4 Packers. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown, along with Randy Cross. And Randy, as if the league's next-to-last rushing attack, along with poor run blocking, aren't problems enough for the Packers, they've got yet another obstacle today. Well, they lost their starting quarterback, Don Mikowski, but they've got Blair Keel. The team's got a lot of confidence, and Blair Keel's got a lot of confidence, and he really should. Going against this Dallas defense, and more specifically, cornerback Ike Holt, he's got a real good chance of getting Holt beaten inside and getting some deep passes on this Dallas defense. Well, speaking of Dallas, last week's victory over the New York Giants, easily the biggest in Jimmy Johnson's tenure here, but he's got his team coming into today's contest cautiously confident. Cautiously confident is about right. From the moment the New York Giant game was off over last Sunday, they have been talking about nothing but the Green Bay Packers. Jimmy Johnson's had this team completely focused on this game here today in Milwaukee because he knows if his Cowboys aren't ready, this is a Green Bay Packer team that is capable of upsetting the Cowboys. The Cowboys have won the coin toss and have elected to receive Chris Jackie, third year place kicker out of Texas El Paso, will do the kicking off for the Packers. And back deep, among others, James Dixon, the second leading kickoff returner in the National Football Conference. I mentioned about the weather at the top, and indeed that may be a bit of a factor today. Temperature 47 degrees, a 17 mile per hour wind blowing right now left to right across your screen. I think we'll see this infield here in Milwaukee being more of a factor, James, in the weather or the wind. And we're underway. At his own seven, Dixon. Trying to turn the corner, no room, fumble. We'll wait the official signal, and it looks like Dallas did recover. Scott Steven with the big hit that time, but Dallas did recover. Troy Aikman, third-year quarterback out of UCLA, having a fine season at the helm for the Cowboys. The offensive line of note there, Allen Vinegrad moving in place of the injured Mark Tuane. Tuane, the best pass-blocking lineman for the Cowboys. Max Emmett Smith. Darrell Johnston fullback and the receivers, Wright and Irvin. So the Cowboys will open up at their own 15. First and 10. Smith, the lone back. Wright in motion. Play action. Aikman complete to Johnston. And Johnston has the first down plus about five. So the Cowboys opening up nicely against the defense of the Packers. And the quarterback of that Green Bay Packer defense is free safety Chuck Cecil, and they'll be looking to shut down that fullback out of the backfield and tight end Jay Novacek. Up front for the Packers, is Sarah Tuaolo at nose guard and Robert Brown are very strong run guys. Inside, Brian Noble and Johnny Holland are guys today that will be heavily challenged by a big Dallas Cowboy line. In the backfield, look for the safety, Cecil and Murphy to have to support a lot for the run on Emmett Smith. Out of the eye formation, and Smith... Trying to break loose of the tackle of Brian Noble. Goes ahead for one. Give Noble the credit for tripping him up. We'll bring up a second and nine. Emmett Smith has run better on grass this year than all of last season, averaging 147 yards on grass. That compares with 77 yards last year as you take a look at Jimmy Johnson in his third year as head coach here. And the maturation not only of Emmett Smith, but Troy Aikman have made Jimmy Johnson's job on the offensive side of the ball a lot easier. These guys are having great years so far. Two tight end formation on second and nine. Aikman to Novacek, and Novacek stopped quickly by Mark Murphy after a four-yard pass play. Will bring up a third and five. A lot of blitzes coming in here on Troy Aikman. Get a blitz here. Coming up right here at Troy Aikman. Cecil's moving over for protection. Aikman sees it, he reads it, and he dumps this thing off quick. Look at Bryce Pop, 95, just gets bumped. Wide open right there for the tight end, Novacek. Murphy gets over to make a tackle. Tommy Agee, the lone back, third and five, six defensive backs for the Packers. Aikman throwing it incomplete. The intended receiver that time was Kelvin Martin. Kmart defended by Jerry Holmes. 
So three and out for the Cowboys and last on that second series there. And the Cowboys will punt it away. Mike Saxon on to punt. And Vaisikahema for the Green Bay Packers is looking to have a little bit of a redemption day today after that big fumble last week against the Rams that pretty much cost the Green Bay Packers the game. Sikahema not noted as a fumbler at all. I believe that was only the second in his career as he takes this one from his own 27 and he's driven back. Nice hit applied by Daryl Johnston. Nice special teams coverage by the Packers. Make that the Cowboys. Play here in Milwaukee. No score. As you take a look at today's inactives. The big one there being Don Mikowski, but everybody you see on the screen there is, a, is normally a player that the teams count on. Blair Keel getting the starting nod for the Packers in place of the injured Don Mikowski. Keel making only his third start career-wise. Two tight ends, Ed West and Jackie Harris. First series for the Packers from their own 26. And Woodside taking it up near the 30. And the offensive line that's been under a lot of heat for poor run blocking of note there. Billy Ard making his second career start at left tackle in place of the injured Ken Rutgers. An anemic running game. Keep Woodside, Allen Rice, the receivers, Sterling Sharp and Kerry Kemp. Second and six. All at the 30. Keel back to pass. Good time. Going upfield, looking for Sterling Sharp, but overthrows him. A little miscommunication that time between Sharp and Keel. And Keel last week, if you take a look at Sterling Sharp, was 11 of 15 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. And he'll be testing this guy right here, Isaac Holt, starting at left cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. Up front, really the strength of this Dallas Cowboy team. And inside, Casillas and Jimmy Jones are the best players on that front line. And Jack Del Rio, the middle linebacker, he benefits from that because he, he's able to scrape on the runs. Keep an eye on Ike Holden, Larry Brown, who is a rookie and will be tested. Third and six. Keel. Complete. Is it enough for the first down? And Clarence Weathers looking over at the chains, and it looks like it is enough for the first down. So Weathers did a nice job of running his route, getting just enough yards for the first down. And what we saw Green Bay do there is something they're going to have to do a lot today, James. That, you know, they're very predictable. First play, they either run off tackle right or they run off tackle left. They did that. They got three or four yards. Then they went to the passing game. If Green Bay wins this game today, they're going to do it in the air. They're not going to do it on the ground against this Dallas defense. Lindy Infante, fourth year as a head coach here. Last season, mark of six and ten. First and ten, Allen Rice and Woodside, the backs. Packers from their own 37. And Keel. Intended receiver again was Sterling Sharp, who slipped on the run. Now, Randy, we noticed the receivers having some problems with footing earlier, but that was on the infield, not so much on the grass. And it was mainly the Dallas receivers that were having a hard time slipping and falling. But remember on Sterling Sharp, Sterling Sharp did not practice much this week. Last week against the Rams, it was sort of warm, but Sterling Sharp cramped up very badly on the bus and on the airplane coming back to Green Bay. Didn't get a chance to practice much because his muscles were so sore from that cramping. So he's just now starting to stride out, get stretched out, and get the feel after not having gotten any reps. You said there's nothing like a body cramp. Yeah, that's it's one of the worst things you ever feel in your life when you get that dehydrated and you cramp up. Second and ten. Rice, the lone back. And down will be whistled for the penalty that time. Three penalty flags everywhere. Unless they were drawn offside, just take a look. It would appear Ken Norton on the, on the near side and somebody on the far side jumped well before the snap. Prior to the snap, still second down. Stan Kemp, our referee, making a call against Rich Moran, the seventh-year player out of San Diego State. And he can't understand that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Those guys on the other side were moving first. I can't move then? No, Rich, you can't. 
You got to stay. It's one of the best things about being an offensive lineman. They can throw stuff at you. They can move. They can do the old flinch thing in your face, and you just got to stay, stay completely calm. Ball move back to the 32. Second and 15 for Green Bay. No score. First quarter action. 11-15 remaining. Keel getting plenty of time and throws it low in the direction of Allen Rice. So Blair Keel, who had his passing rhythm last week when he came in relief of Don Mikowski having a little trouble getting uncorked here. Well, if any of you young quarterbacks out there happen to be watching that particular pass by Blair Keel, pretend you didn't see that. That was uh, he was getting good protection up front. He pump faked, and when he pump faked, he saw that that guy wasn't open, and he went to throw it out in the flat. And when he threw it out in the flat, he was completely flat-footed, throwing off his back foot. And every time a quarterback does that, he does, he has to throw the ball on the ground. His body mechanics will not allow him to complete that pass. Third and 15. Kemp to the near side. Six defensive backs for the Cowboys. And throws it complete to Clarence Weathers, and he's going to be well shy of the first down marker by at least four yards. A gain of 11 on the play. But it'll be punting time for the Packers. In this game, James, you got to understand, Green Bay has a very good run defense, so they can afford to play field position with the Cowboys. They're going to be nailing the Cowboys back deep if they can prevent a return. And next time they get the ball, if they stop the Cowboys, they'll, have, they'll get in better and better field position. Nailing deep has been what Paul McJulian has been doing as we take a look at Derek Shepard back to receive the punt. McJulian, high one, fair catch, Sydney, and Kurt Larson for the Packers downs the ball at about the 16-yard line. Now. What the fans are screaming about is whether or not the ball actually touched the leg of Derek Shepard. And if it did, you aren't going to hear him say, yeah, I'm sorry, it did. <laughs> we'll take another look at this. You know, he's fair catching. He doesn't want to catch it. All of a sudden, at the last minute, he realizes the wind has got this thing. Watch it bounce, right? No, no, it never touched him. It was close enough to make everybody from Dallas a little bit nervous, but it's Green Bay ball. Cowboys look out on that punt as the ball did not touch Derek Shepard. So the Cowboys will take over at their own 18. Luck, not a big factor in terms of where the Cowboys are in the standings. They're playing well. But look at those Giants. They're not playing good, and they've got all sorts of dissension going on in New York. The dreaded, unidentified source or a player who asked not to be mentioned. You see that start coming up in the newspapers. I don't care how good your talent is. It's pure dissension. And in the NFC Central, Chicago, nobody's surprised by that, but their record may change today when they meet the Redskins, who I think are going to have a good chance of beating the Bears. Detroit, that is a shock at 4-1, especially if you watch that first game against Washington, where the Redskins shut them out 45 to nothing. Green Bay's defense nearly shut out Emmitt Smith. A gain of one brings up a second and nine. Aikman back to pass. And Aikman throws in the direction of Jay Novacek, but again, Randy, we were talking about the footing, and a little surprising, you were down on the field prior to the game. Did the grass look to be that slippery? The one thing about the field here in Milwaukee that is different, the grass is a little bit longer than your, than your normal field. A lot of that has to do with baseball, but it is not wet. It was covered the last couple of days when it was raining here, so there's no real excuse outside of the fact that, you know, Cowboys, they only practice on grass. They don't play on it. There's that wonderful infield. Isn't that great? Believe me, you land on that, you leave skin on that infield. That hurts. I'd imagine so. And in defense of some of the receivers, it did drizzle slightly before the game here. On third and nine, taking pressure from Pop. Incomplete flag on the play. I think we're going to have a little illegal contact downfield on the Green Bay Packer defense, James. Ball was thrown in the direction of Kelvin Martin. One thing to remember, though, after the quarterback leaves the pocket, you can't have John contact Jackson with the receiver. So it's a matter of when that contact occurred. Did it occur while, while Aiken was still in the pocket or after he had already scrambled? Well, they're walking. They want to go over where there aren't any players. And I got news for you guys. The players are going to follow wherever you go. <laughs> they, want, they want that last say, that little input that might make a difference. We'll find out if it did. Holding, number 25, defense, automatic first down. 
And that's Benny Clark, the number one draft choice for the Packers, a rookie out of Ohio State. Well, you can make contact downfield, but, you know, Vinny, you're a rookie in Ohio State. Maybe in the Big Ten you can hold them downfield, but you can't hold them. So Cowboy first down. Ball at the 24. Smith trying to juke move and does. Still on his feet. Has the first down. Emmett Smith. Now, Randy, in talking about and with him, many people try to compare him with Barry Sanders. Not quite the same runner, but just as effective. If you wanted to use one word to describe the difference between Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith, it'd be the quiver. Barry Sanders has the quiver. He can go in all directions at once. Emmett Smith does not do that. But what Emmett Smith has, I think he has stronger legs. Now, watch him break this tackle by Brian Noble. Noble's hands slip right off. Now you see classic Emmett Smith. He cannot be arm tackled. You have got to grab him. If you get him high, you better get him hard. 14-yard dash by Smith. First and 10. Ball at the 38. To Smith again. Why not try it again? Not quite the same results. Smith maybe two yards on the play. Tackled by Scott Stevens. That was basically the same play twice in a row, James. The difference was the tackle. The first time he broke the tackle, this time he didn't. The Green Bay Packer defense is not always a great defense to try to go back to the well on twice in a row real quick. A lot because of their talent, but mainly because of their defensive coordinator, Hank Bulla. He learns too quick, and he has seen everything. He adjusts in an instant. The mad scientist. Robert Brown out. Sean Patterson in at right end for the Packers. Second and eight. On the ground, Smith. And Smith maybe a yard. Well, folks are talking very highly, of course, about Emmett Smith and comparing him very favorably to someone else who had a great career in Dallas. And this is through 20 games. Comparisons like this can be a little premature at times, but it's very interesting to see the comparisons from a touchdown standpoint. What really jumped out at me when I saw this was Tony Dorsett's per carry average. 4.9 yards that early in his career is incredible. Emmett Smith leaving the field. Tommy Ag, the back. Third and seven. Cowboy go-to guy is Michael Irvin. Novacek with a good block. Thrown in the direction of Michael Irvin. And again, yet another slip by a Cowboy receiver. Ball was thrown right there. Irvin was heading in that direction. But again, another foot slip. It's hard to tell right here if this is excellent defense. Great stance by Vinnie Clark right there. Working against Irvin. Look at that push-off. That would have been a completion. I'm surprised it wasn't a penalty because that was blatant pushing off by the receiver, Michael Irvin, there. But that slip was made that not a completion. Instead, Mike Saxon comes on to punt, seventh-year player out of San Diego State. By Sikahema back to receive. Sikahema back at his own 20. Nearly blocked that time by Walter Dean Sikahema from his own 21. And gets it across the 25 to about the 27-yard line as Michael Saxon gets up limping, wondering why no flag. And there's an official timeout on the field. Let's watch this one more time. Remember, was he blocked into him? Here's the run. They must have ruled that he was blocked into him or that he hung that leg out a little too long. The ref ignored the contact. Packers ball at their own 27. 742 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Blair Keel, that quarterback, looking for Sterling Sharp again. Low throw, and they say he trapped it. Incomplete. So it's apparent that Keel wants to get Sharp in the game early. But, Randy, you think Mike Saxon might have had a good complaint? I don't think there is any doubt about it, James. This is blatant roughing the kicker, and they don't catch it. Look at Dean, 42 on the end of the line here. A gap will open up. He'll come right through here, and we're going to stop it right at the contact with the kicker. He is not touched. He is not blocked. He runs it right into Saxon's leg clean. Watch this. He lays out. 
I don't know. I mean, uh, it doesn't take an IBM troubleshooter to figure that one out. I mean, that was rough from the kicker. He must have been asleep about to call that one. IBM troubleshooter. Flag on the play as Gill goes up top for Sharp. And he drops the ball. Sharp with a nice attempt at an over-the-head catch defended by Larry Brown, but there is a flag on the play back at the 30. And if this goes against Dallas, that's against Green Bay. I was going to say, if this goes against Dallas, that was a fabulous play by Brown because that ball was caught by Sterling Sharp and it was stripped out by Brown. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Larry Brown, Jimmy Johnson had nothing but positives to say about this young man. Illegal formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. Third down. That'll do it. The old, it's either the old offensive line flying wedge, actually. <laughs> Here, let's see it one more time. Watch this. Over the shoulder. Good concentration. But watch the hands of Brown. Look at that. He bats that thing right out because that was a catch. There were two feet down inbounds. Third and ten. Heel out of the shotgun. Throws it incomplete. And there's a flag on the play as Clarence Weathers had his hands on the ball. And James Washington very upset as we take a look at Vince Albritton being led off the field with the sling on that left shoulder. And Washington obviously doesn't agree, but I think they were all over the receiver on that one. That was an easy call. Pass interference, number 45 on the defense. Automatic first down. Manny Hendricks makes the error and heads off the field. Let's watch it one more time. Blair Keel in the pocket, zips this thing. Probably was not a catchable ball, but what the call was, the call was that Hendricks was making contact with Weathers from behind before the ball got there, and he was. Ball mark at the 32nd of Green Bay, first and 10, 7.28 remaining, no score. Quick out to the side, and a quick hit applied by Isaac Hope. And Hope was not the 10 to 15 yards off we had grown accustomed to seeing him. Not as much as you'd think. They do play soft, but I tell you what you got to listen here. They play soft, guys filling up, Holt's having a hard time. Why don't we listen to what this contact sounds like? Because Blair Keel thinks he's got an easy play. That's, all, that's called getting a face full right now, Mr. Woodside. Face full. Second and seven. I guess that was a birthday hit apply by Holt. 29th birthday yesterday. Woodside. And Woodside gets up near the first down marker. Seven-yard run that may be enough. But in the meantime, let's check in with Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, JB, at the Silverdome in Pontiac, from 11 yards out, Darren Nelson scores the Vikings' first touchdown in 11 quarters. And with the point after, it's Minnesota 7 and Detroit nothing. Back to Milwaukee, JB and Randy. Darren Nelson's doing his Freddy Krueger imitation there in Minnesota, back from the dead. I thought they got rid of him. He's back again. I'm sure a lot of people thought that. It's hard to get rid of those Stanford guys. Though. I mean, they can always think of a way to come back. Very astute. Very astute people. Those well, I tell you what, if that's not a first down, it's by the uh, width of an ant's, uh, shall we say, leg, huh? I always kind of laugh when they do those measurements like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they keep stretching. That, that chain is metal. It's not going to stretch out any further. Just put the sucker down, and let's see if it's a first down or not. But last week, we saw them actually tilt the ball forward. Reports to an eligible position. So Lindy Infante looks at a third and, well, we'll call it an inch. In this situation, your best running back is your quarterback. The tackles will be pinching on defense, but they should be able to get this much. Dean and Workman. Workman the tail back in the eye. And it's Workman. And Workman has it. So Vince Workman with the handoff gives the Packers a first down. Packers trying to break a scoreless first quarter trend that has plagued them since 
December 22nd of last year, last game they scored a touchdown in the first quarter, and December 30th when they had a field goal in the first quarter. A lot of their problems, too, have been not only turnovers, James, they've had touchdowns called back by penalties, they've had balls dropped. Um, if anything wrong could go wrong so far for the Dallas Cowboys, they know their defense can stop the Dallas running game, or they hope it can. So far it has, and Green Bay's field position has improved little by little each time they've gotten the ball. Sterling Sharp to the far side. Rice, the lone back. Keel. Finally connects with Sterling Sharp for the first down. And with that reception, Sterling Sharp keeps his consecutive game reception streak alive at 45. I don't think I've ever talked to a wide receiver that's more concerned about a consecutive game reception streak that is so short. I mean, it's only 45, 45 games. What's he mm -hmm. got? About 150 to catch larger? Mm -hmm. One more time from the end zone. Blair's getting the... Bear, Blair's getting the blitz, and he steps up. What we're seeing is something that we weren't expecting, to be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. The Green Bay Packers are testing the rookie Brown, and they have left Isaac Holt alone on the other side, unlike the previous five opponents of the Cowboys. Packers in Cowboys territory. Ball at the 36, first and 10. This is Rice. Flag on the play. And Randy with the good eyes signaling that it's a holding call. Uh, somebody had a little too good a grasp of their technique on that last play, I believe, in the offensive line. Too good a grasp, huh? Yeah. What penalties? Playing havoc with Green Bay in the early going. And when you're talking penalties, life Holy is timing. Oh, number 57, 57 offense. offense. Repeat first down. first down. And Rich Moran off to a bit of a slow start today. He's had an offsides and now a holding. But these penalties that come against the Packers, no penalty comes at a good time. But for the Packers, their penalties come at terrible times. That was a bad time. And they get a lot of their penalties in the first quarter. And as a result, how many points did they score in the first quarter? The old goose egg. Zippo, third penalty in the first quarter. Blair Keel, 4 of 9 for 36 yards. First and 20. To Woodside. Woodside pushed out of bounds at the 39. I'll make that the 41. Isaac Holt pushing him out. Pick up a 5 on the play. And we were talking about Rich Moran, and it's only natural to be a little bit a little bit nervous, a little bit antsy, because he is working in there against the strength of the Dallas Cowboy defense. And the strength of their defense All is that the interior with Del Rio and Casillas and Jones and Noonan and Maryland when he's in there. And the guards and center of the Green Bay Packers will be tested all day long. Second and 15. Keel looking for Sharp, overthrows him, and Sharp clearly frustrated with the miscommunication between he and Keel. He didn't even attempt to jump at that one. Sterling is a veteran. Look at him smiling. Sterling is also a smart veteran. Mm -hmm. If you see a ball up there eight, nine feet over your head, why jump? Jerry Rice found out last week against the Los Angeles Raiders why you don't jump for balls like that, because when you come down, it's usually on the back of your neck, and things like that really hurt. So hey. Sterling didn't bother. Smart move, huh? All right. Third and 15. He's probably telling tell Blair, though, if you're going to throw it away, don't Keep throw it, it away in my direction. Keep it low. <laughs> Third and 15 from the 41. And Keel throws it momentarily complete to Perry Kemp, who was anticipating the hit, and Isaac Holt obliged him. Very nice play by Isaac Holt, and he's doing what he told us yesterday when we talked to him. He says, hey, I've got to go back to my game. If I gamble and I get beat, that's okay by my standards, but I got to be aggressive. And here is a nice, aggressive play. Look at him coming up there on Kemp. If Kemp would have caught that ball, Isaac Holt would have found a way to either strip it or knock it out. Yeah, let's give Holt some credit. Looking aggressive and good in the early going. And boy, has he been burned all season long. The second game of the season against the Redskins was the start of the slide. Paul McJulian on to punt for the Packers. Good high one. And Horton lets it drop. There is a flag on the play back at about the 44-yard line. Where they drop that flag, James, that's got to be a legal man downfield on the punting team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
They seem, to, they seem to go to the same part of this field here in Milwaukee to conference. Is there some sort of uh, point of light over there in the corner that... Uh... I guess it's got the conference room marker headed in that direction or pointed in that direction. And Infante, obviously not pleased with the foul-ups on the part of his team. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. And that's just the guys next to the center weren't lined up close enough to the ball. That's a very simple thing. Randy, as we take a look, uh, the only stadium in the NFL where both teams share the same sidelines. It can be a real distraction for a young, inexperienced team like a Dallas Cowboy team. They're not used to it. Dave wants that the defensive voice coordinator for the Cowboys says, we're kind of worried about our players treating this almost like a preseason game with a festival atmosphere in a baseball stadium. First and ten for the Cowboys. Pitch back to Smith. And Smith ahead for maybe three yards. Okay. Well, before that carry, Emmett Smith had three carries for three yards. He's going against the best rushing defense in the NFL. They're averaging 2.5 yards per carry against them. And we also saw early Dallas recognizing that, trying to flip the ball out to Emmett Smith, out in the flanks, trying to get him outside and use him so he doesn't have to batter him up front. Brings up a second and seven for the Cowboys. Ball at their own 23. 2-0-1 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Kmart in motion. And the pressure was on, but complete to Irvin. And Irvin has the first down and gets up near the 45. Mark Murphy running them out of bounds. But boy, Troy Aikman has shown all along throughout his young career that he will stand there and take the hit in order to get rid of the ball. You know, kind of like a heavyweight boxer, he can take a hit. Watch Murphy come right Oh, that's Matt Brock, not Murphy, came right up the middle and put a spanking on him. Now, here comes Murphy to make the tackle on Michael Irvin to push him out of bounds. Great job by Troy, though. Troy is the kind of quarterback that has so much confidence in his own ability and so much guts and stamina. He will stand there and take hits. I don't think more than one or two of the quarterbacks in this league will do. Confidence certainly describes the picture you just saw there, the one of Michael Irvin. First and 10. And complete to Novacek. And Novacek has yet another first down for the Cowboys. So Troy Aikman marching the team nicely. And in the normal Dallas Cowboy offense, according to offensive coordinator Norv Turner, the tight end is a checkoff guy. He's your second guy if your receiver is not open. If your back's out in the flat, you want to throw it to him and he's covered, you go to your tight end guy. He says, today, watch us get Novacek. We're going to split him out wide. We're going to start expanding his role in this offense. And they got him outside wide. And there's Norv Turner on the left side there with his is chewing on his fingernails there nervously. But they want to do that so they can use a nickel look on second and first down. Alfredo Roberts, Jay Novacek, two tight end formation here. And Smith picking his hole, heading to the outside. And gets slightly past Scott Steven and dragged down by Scott Steven. But an eight-yard scamper by Emmett Smith. You know, you talked about the tight ends. And if Sterling Sharp is concerned about consecutive game receptions, Novacek 25 consecutive games, and he leads all tight ends in the NFC with receptions. And one thing Novacek can also do is run block very effectively, especially on the backside of a play where we saw that last play. Emmett Smith, the run was going weak, but the backside blocking was so good that Emmett Smith is able to get about two or three steps into his run, and in the corner of his eye, he sees that opening backside, and he takes it. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. And Green Bay again, scoreless in the first quarter. The skyline, downtown Milwaukee. Realize the tallest building in downtown Milwaukee, I'm told, is 42 stories. But you can see Waukegan from there. <laughs> Not quite the 110 or so of uh, the Empire State Building, but nonetheless tall. Second and two for the Cowboys. Ball at the 36. And Daryl Johnston pulling his way ahead. The Dallas Cowboys right now are finding out why the Green Bay defense is only giving up two and a half yards per rush on an average. They're trying to test the inside of this of this cow of this uh, Packer defense. That's not the place to do it. Brian Noble's inside there. Asaratua Olo is in there. Holland's in there. You got to get outside on this defense. Stretch him a little bit laterally before you try to get up inside. 
And Johnston only a yard gained on the play. We'll bring up a third and one. Allen Beingrad, the eligible receiver here. Way to check in motion. On the ground again as Smith tries to go up top. Did he have enough? Well, when you're five foot nine, 207 pounds, I don't know if jumping is one of your prime attributes. And he didn't get very high up. He got one of those three or four uh, book of matches type leaps up there and didn't quite get high enough out of the line, I think. Well, he's not a slam dunker in basketball. And Smith is going to be shy in the first down marker by about a half a yard, maybe. So we'll call it fourth and one. And Jimmy Johnson's going to go for it here. Cowboys are two of four. A lot of faith in your defense when you go for it on your opponent's 35-yard line. Smith. I don't know. He, he didn't get it. Green Bay defense holds. Right in here is where the Dallas Cowboys are going to test the Green Bay Packers. Watch the penetration that happens right in here by the Green Bay line. They are underneath the Dallas Cowboy lineman. The lineman cannot get drive. And then it's Murphy, Pop, Bennett. They stuff Emmett Smith. No score here in the second quarter. No score, that is. If you take a look at the passing yards of Dallas and Green Bay, Mikowski, of course, you know, is inactive today. Smith, only seven rushes for 14 yards. Dallas, eight for 15. Why is Green Bay so effective in the middle? They've got two all over in the middle now. That's a big addition, plus it's attitude. Just like their offense can't run because it doesn't have the attitude, their defense doesn't like to have rushing yards against them. And working on the counter. Actually, a loss on the play. A loss of about five yards. Well, Randy, I guess we ought to give the uh, rookie Tuaolo an awful lot of credit because he's really helped to shore up that middle. Well, what he's done, they've had in the past, they've had Bob Nelson in there who was a real good two-gap two kind of a guy that just sort of stuffed things. But the addition of Tuaolo, not only with the strength that he has, but he has the lateral quickness to get in there and really All disrupt plays. with the second and 15. Teal with time. Throws a complete to Workman. But Workman has no place to go. Good tackling, good read Workman by the Cowboys. Reception. Among others, Ken Norton on the tackle along with James Washington. Let's take another look at it right here. Look at the line. They're not selling this as the run as hard as they should, and they get stuffed. They should be lower. The pads of the Packers are well underneath the Dallas Cowboy offensive lineman pads. Third and 14. Sharp and Wilson to the near side. Kemp to the far side. Four wide receivers for the Packers. Keel decides to run it. He's going to be short about six yards. The necessary yardage for the first down. He picked up eight on the play. So McJulian will come on to punt for the Packers. And Shepard back to receive for the Cowboys. Last week, Blair Keel was the leading rusher for the Green Bay Packers. Not a good sign when you're talking about trying to run the ball when your quarterback has to scramble to make yards on the ground. Matter of fact, he had the longest run last week. And McJulian somehow concentrated through the pressure. Fair catch at the 19 by Shepard. So the Cowboys will come out and give it a shot at their own 19. Empty, very apropos. Thompson led the first two weeks for the Packers. He's on IR. Since then, it's been two quarterbacks and Allen Rice, a backup fullback. And Rice, with 89 yards, came into this game as the leading running back, leading rusher for the Green Bay Packers. And guess who it is today? Keith Woodside, two rushes for only 10 yards. First and 10. Cowboys at their own 20. Smith. 
Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Dallas right a now. A loss of two on the play, Randy. I'm sorry. Sorry, James. Dallas would seem to be a little bit frustrated at this time right now. They're not being able to run the ball effectively. And for their passing game, they haven't shown the patience that it requires to go against a Hank Bola defense. You don't go downtown against Hank Bola in this defense. you got to be content to go 10, 15 yards and get your yardage that way. Second and 12. Complete to Johnston, and Johnston up near the first down marker looks to have enough for the first down. And he does. Johnny Holland pushing him out of bounds. That's the very kind of thing they're going to have to do. They're going to have to go to their fullback and halfback out of the backfield. They're going to have to go to their tight end and their receivers coming underneath because Hank Bull has got this kind of three deep zone working right now where Mark Murphy is basically a fifth line or fourth linebacker. And he's up there in position to support every single time. They're going to have to go away from the run for a while and make this defense loosen up by throwing against. And Troy Aikman has no problems in spreading the ball around. No, not at all. He will get this ball to every receiver possible. From the 30, first and 10. Smith. And Smith ahead for about four yards will bring up a second and six. Packers actually lead this series 10 to 5. One of only six clubs in NFL history with a winning record against the Cowboys. Last time Dallas played here back in 1980. And as far as playing here in Milwaukee, the teams have split four games played here. Dallas winning the last two, 1978 and 1980. Second and six. Aiken dumps it over the middle to Johnston for yet another first down and across midfield. Johnston. So Daryl Johnston, who came into the game with nine catches, looking good today, 17 Johnston. yards, as he gets up a little slow, limping on that left ankle. That was a head-on hit right here on Johnston. Keep an eye on him. He's the up back there in the, in the offensive formation as he curls around and through the defense. Watch him come around. North Turner and this offense have decided if you want to take our tight end and our receiver away, we'll go to our fullback. But watch the hit right there as he goes down with that ankle tackle. It would appear he might have twisted that ankle a little bit. Aikman has gone to Johnston today three times for 46 yards. And backing up Johnston today is Ricky Blake, former World Leaguer. Fans had a lot of action. He had a full season and a training camp in the World League, and then just for good measure, went to Canada for a couple weeks at Double Days before he headed down to Austin to training camp with the Cowboys. Right now, Emmett Smith, the lone back. 8.42 left in the first half. No score. In the direction of Michael Irvin, incomplete. No flags on the play. And that was a good example there of when a zone is not stretched, where the relationship should be between the defensive backs and the linebackers in front of them. There's about a three to five yard cushion between them. Irvin was trying to get in there, but you've got to be a magician to be able to drop a ball over that linebacker coverage and in front of those defensive backs into a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Magician. Or a bombardier. Troy Aikman, 8 of 12 for 99 yards. Second and 10. Smith. And Smith slithery and sliding his way ahead. Inside the 45. Call it a six-yard pickup. Emmett Smith has, got, has great vision. He can see the entire field. He sees the blocking. Watch him right here. The ball will be flipped to him. He could go here, he could go here, or he could go here, he could cut back. Look at his options, and you be the running back and almost read this. Where's the hole? See that open up real late there? That's what Emmett Smith saw. Cowboys have a third and four. Ball at the 44. Six DBs and for the Packers. 
Aikman. Flag on a play. Ball is batted down, but there is a flag on the near sideline. That went down fast enough. Has to be encroachment. Yep. It's usually a linebacker or a defensive end, and their enthusiasm to line up as close to the ball as possible. They line up in that neutral zone of the football. Thirteen years in the league for Randy Cross and trench warfare, and you certainly know when those flags are down and what they mean. Offsides on the defense, number 95, lined up in the neutral zone. The penalty may result in a first down. You know, the neutral zone to some people is such an ambiguous term. It's like, is that a DMZ? Is that, I mean, what exactly is a neutral zone? The neutral zone is the space the ball takes up. Nobody should be in that space of the ball. The center should have his hand there. That area right there should be the neutral zone. Nobody's over the football except for the center. Mm -hmm. And he deserves to be over the, over the football and get a little edge because it's such a tough position to play. And that was called on Bryce Pop. As you take a look at Bryce Pop. One more time. It will be third down for the Dallas Cowboys. Third and extremely short. And they call it on Bryce Pop, who's lined up right down at the bottom of the screen. Had that hand just offside and into that neutral zone. And 79. Number Eric. receiver Eric Williams, a rookie out of Central State in Ohio. That's all kinds of tight end. Third and inches to Novacek, and he has plenty to spare with the first down. So Novacek taking it inside the 30 to about the 29 of Green Bay. 7:42 remaining in the first half. And that was the kind of tight, a kind of play. Watch the all the action go away. The defense bites quickly on this handoff. The play action fake to Emmett Smith. And the tight end does a quick drag from his original position. Novacek coming in motion. That was an easy one. You see the 49ers use that play a lot with Jerry Rice down in the goal line situation where they'll bring him in motion and drag him right in front of the defensive backs. The defensive backs have to make a decision. Do I want to come up and risk making a tackle and missing it? Or do I keep the ball in front of me and give up the first down? First and 10 from the 29 of Green Bay. Aikman pumps. Quick out to Emmett Smith and Emmett loses his footing. A loss of three on the play. And Brian Noble on the stop. We're live at Milwaukee County Stadium. Southeastern part of the state. James Brown along with Randy Cross. A scoreless ball game with 7.02 remaining in the first half. And what we've seen so far, James, has been an inspired Packer defense really coming here today to play some football against a Dallas Cowboy team that seems a little bit ineffective, not quite firing. Maybe some of the worries of Jimmy Johnson and North Turner and the rest of the coaching staff for the Dallas Cowboys was well-founded because this team just looks a little bit flat so far today. Second and 13, ball at 32. Aikman looking for Urban Hazen for the first down. Did he hold it long enough? And it looks as if he did. Jerry Holmes providing the coverage Irvin this guy is something. Michael Irvin has got a personality, and he's got enough personality for this entire offense. Look at him working against Holmes. He knows I've got to get exactly to a spot in this defense, and Troy will get me the ball. You saw Novacek in the original play. He's jumping up trying to grab it. The defensive back's trying to bat it. But Michael Irvin told us yesterday, I run the spots in this offense. North Turner's offense is perfectly suited for our talent. First and 10 from the 17. Dallas threatening in the red zone. Out to Smith. And Smith, little juke move. A couple of yards picked up. Stopped by Johnny Holland. And what has Holland Dallas done inside the red zone this year? It hasn't been their strength. You wouldn't say they're a team that has dominated inside the 20 so far. They have turned the ball over a couple times. But the one part of the stat to look at is they've gotten in there 12 times. Seven times they've come away with six points. That is significant. We get a chance later on Check if the eight. Green Bay Packer offense the gets Packer in there. 15. We'll see something completely different right here. Look at this. Field goals. Eight field goals inside the 20. That is pathetic. Smith. Getting down near the 12 or four yard pickup by Emmett Smith. John Madden Smith. mentioned on the NFL Today show about teams getting more conservative inside the red zone. You buy that as well? 
I don't really. You know, they're, they're still the there's still the Mike Holmgrens and there's still the Norv Turners and there's still the guys that want to do it. You know, jo John seen the Giants and John seen the Redskins and John seen the, the Bears and whatnot. And those are teams that just by their basic nature and makeup of their coaching staffs are not risk takers. I don't think it's something that is widespread around the league. If anything, I think the more interesting and exciting teams are willing to take chances down here. Third and AG in motion. Flag on the play. Complete across the middle to Alfredo Roberts. But there is a flag on the play. That'll be fourth down. I tell you, with those three tight ends, Novacek and Awal and Roberts, the Cowboys might have the best trio in the NFL. Against the Cowboys. Well, I think right here, you hear you got to decline this penalty and make Dallas kick the field goal. 4-23 remaining. Dallas, Dallas trying to get, to get on the scoreboard. Both teams with their four complement lament of timeouts, three apiece. You know, Troy Aikman and company is just a little bit too dangerous to give them another third down shot. He's got the Irvins, he's got the Wrights, he's got the Smiths. Too many tools. You decline this penalty and you make it fourth down. Illegal. Yeah, yeah. Two men two moving men on, on the offense. Out. Repeat third down. Ooh, I completely disagree with that. I think this is a mistake by the Green Bay Packers, you have got to get inside and to take that thing, decline the penalty, and make them kick a field goal. This is, not, this is hardly outside of Willis's range. Even if they kick this thing, it's like a 34-yarder. This is playing with fire right now for Green Bay. Third and 10 from the 17 for the Cowboys. Aiken looking right, throws it incomplete the hand of Michael Irvin. It looked like his principal receiver was Jay Novacek, and again, that slippery footing. Novacek went down. Irvin came into the picture and tried to get it. Well, we talked about it being an offense that's based on positioning and based on receivers getting to a spot. I don't think I agree. I agree with you. I think Irvin was not the main, the main receiver on that play. He was trying to get the ball to Novacek, and Irvin batted it down. That's why you saw that reaction of Irvin jumping up and down. He knew he wasn't supposed to touch that ball. Ken Willis coming on to attempt a 35-yard field goal. The birthday boy celebrating his 25th birthday. Just a puppy, huh, Randy? A mere sapling. I think every official out there let the flag go that time. Start. Number 75. Well, this part of the second quarter is turning into a Kleenex convention, convention right now with their officials throwing their flags. And Dallas is trying to do their best imitation of the Green Bay Packers, just trying to see how many mistakes they can make to try to get themselves completely out of field goal position. Tony Casillas, the culprit that time. So this makes it a 40-yard field goal attempt. Still should be an easy stroke for Willis. And it's no good. So the easy stroke proved to be a little more difficult. And Dallas comes away with no points. A 13-play Dallas drive, 58 yards, and the Cowboys come away empty-handed, and we still have no score here in the first half. 3.50 left in the first half of play. The Green Bay Packers got lucky there. They dodged a major bullet, maybe even a howitzer on that one. To decline that penalty, give Troy Aikman and that oh, offense another chance. The Dallas Cowboys cooperated and pushed themselves out of a scoring opportunity right there. So the pack takes over at its own 22. Keel to Sharp for the first down. So the first good pass is thrown to Sterling Sharp today. Postseason play begins Tuesday night right here on CBS with the ALCS between the Blue Jays and the Twins starting at 8.30 Eastern. On Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern, it's Game 2 of the American League Championship Series. And at 8.30, it's Game 1 of the National League Championship Series between the Pirates and the Braves. Remember, the entire baseball postseason is right here on CBS. First and 10. Ball at the 33. Three wide out 10 for the Packers. Keel grabbed momentarily, still gets rid of it. 
and Casillas was back there inside of Keel's skull. Well, he was at least inside of his shirt. They had a blitz coming in from the inside, appeared to be one of the safeties coming in the middle, and they just get all over Blair Keel, and it was a good example right here of the new rule about the quarterbacks. Can you get the quarterback? Can you grab him? And then is it all right? Watch this. It used to be in the grasp. He's in the grasp right here. He's got him by the leg. Vincent Smith does 57. Last year, that had been a sack. This year, he does not have control and is not threatened by another player. So you can see this is still thanking me for that, uh, that little bit of a boost there. Give it to Smith. Play action Keel goes back to Jackie Harris, and Harris hit nicely by Isaac Hope. Jackie a gain of four on the play. Could have been more, but for the hit applied by Isaac Hope. You know, Hope is playing more aggressively, and... And when we talked also with him about some of the remedies he's trying to put in place, and he talked about a trip up to Dallas that he received this week. Oh, he was happy. He says, my mom came in. And my mom, as soon as she got there, about 9.30 at night, just said, honey, are you hungry? Should I go to He says, I, I did some serious shopping the day before. I was ready for her to come into town. He says, I had pork chops and greens and all kinds of good stuff. And he's playing pretty decently right now. Third and six. Four wideouts in for the pass. Keel going to Weathers, complete for the first down. Weathers turned Robert Williams around. Ball at the 42 of Dallas. Good job by Blair Keel, because Ray Horton, number 20, on the right side of the screen is up showing blitz. The Dallas Cowboys come back into a three-deep zone. And he just gets Clarence Weathers, get a little slip out there on the corner by Isaac Holt, and that's what opened up Clarence Weathers, who got two feet down for the catch. Nice drag by the shoes. First and 10, ball at the 42, 2.15 remaining in the first half. No score. Kill intended for Sterling Sharp. Sharp went to the sideline, Keel through to the inside. Well, Isaac Holt on the coverage. We're talking about the Dallas Cowboys offense being one where they throw to a spot and the receiver should be there. Well, Blair Keel got a blitz from Kenny Norton and Vincent Smith and the tackles on the inside got free on him there. He saw nothing but white jerseys and he threw that ball to a spot where he just hoped there was somebody in a green shirt. He said, I guess you could say he admires Troy Aikman, but not that much. How to take the hits. No, 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 no. Blair, Blair at six foot and about 200 pounds is not the guy you want to get pounded on too often. And he wants you to get that half inch in there, six feet, a half inch. I'd have to see it to believe it. <laughs> Second and ten. Rice to the lone back. Picked off by Horton. Touchdown, Dallas. Second touchdown in two weeks. Important, a 65-yard interception return for the first score of the game. And boy, did you see him grab Larry Brown and say, let me use you as a boost to get ahead? That, that, in bike racing, that's called drafting, isn't it, James? You, you did the Tour de Pont. You draft that guy in front of you, you grab him, and you pull by with that draft. <laughs> that's what he did. It's a nice job by Horton reading that quarterback's eyes the entire way. Blair Keel was looking over it this way the entire time. And as soon as that ball was in the air, Horton was breaking on the ball. His touchdown. The play is under review. I would think what they're going to look at is right over here at about the 35-yard line, whether or not Horton stepped out of bounds after he catches the ball. And they've decided the play stands. It is a touchdown. What they were looking at, watch, right in here. Horton catches it. Can he stop his momentum? Oh, easily. Right there. He may have missed it by about six inches. Watch right here. Watch him draft on Brown. Well, before we watch the draft, we will watch Willis try to kick this extra point. And he does. A 65-yard interception return for a score. Dallas on the board. The ball isn't thrown. Look at him breaking. He's breaking now before the ball is ever in the air. He knows exactly where that ball's going. Now, if you want to have a little fun here, 
Brown, 24, will take some grief by not being able to outrun a, a safety when he's a cornerback. Little drafting, grabs him by, pulls him through, makes a block. But he almost got run over by a guy trying to run for a touchdown. Brown, not quite big enough, I guess, Horton thought, at only 184 pounds. So Willis will kick off for the Cowboys. Something he's been doing very well this year. And Sikahima, touchback, brings it out to the 20. Coming up on the NFL Today Dockers halftime report, Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the league. And Andrea Joyce will check in with the newly crowned National League West Division champion, Atlanta Braves, as they get set for the National League Championship Series. Coming up, it's all right here on CBS. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts. You know, Ray Horton, ninth-year player out of Washington, is in the final year of his contract. And with that fumble recovery for a touchdown last week, interception return for a touchdown this week, not a bad way to go into contract negotiations. Well, we talked about Isaac Holt and life being timing. And by the same token, timing is very, very good so far for Horton. But it's early. It's kind of like getting your birdie in the fourth hole of 18. It's early. Keel, incomplete attempted pass. So Perry Kemp, 149 left in the first half of play. And so far, they've tried to test Isaac Holt. And so far, he's passed with flying colors on this test. He really has played very effectively in this game. Welcome back to our New York studio, everyone. The Atlanta Brewers in a single season. Wrestling in Atlanta. The city of Atlanta woke up this morning clearly enjoying the Braves' newfound worst-to-first status. No, oh, they say not quite. Oh, boy, would that have been a nice ego boost. Now, wait a minute. One official signaled no, and they're having a conference about it. And that guy right there, number 10, was just, they just made a Blair Keel sandwich at about the 10-yard line there for the Green Bay Packers. Daniel Stubbs, your old guy, applying the heat on Keel. Receptions. The catch is good. Now that's, you talk about a break going Holt's way. That's great. You know, Isaac Holt made a comment. He says, you know, my grandfather told me something a long time ago. Even a blind mule finds an ear of corn sometimes. And here is Isaac Holt's ear of corn. He well, held it. He had it. The ball bounced up a little bit there, but he had that the whole way. All three ears of corn this year. Interceptions the Dallas defense have. That man right there, Isaac Holt. You know, and that's the main reason you've got a guy like Holt in the game. He's a guy that's going to make the big plays for you. you got to hang with him. He will be a good player for the rest of this year. Isaac Holt coming on strong. Talk about a nice coming out party. Dallas leading 7-zip. Both teams, three timeouts remaining, 144 remaining. And as well as Isaac Holt is playing defensively, you talk about defense. Green Bay's defense has been doing a job against the Dallas rush. And it's funny that you talk about the Green Bay defense being a great rushing defense. The last couple of years, it's been Tim Harris and the pass rush. And the, they are the number two ru pass rushing defense with Bryce Pop. But as of right now, they need to get heat on the quarterback. Maybe they need a Tim Harris. Maybe they shouldn't have got rid of a Tim Harris. First and ten. This is Emmett Smith. Smith trying to find a hole and around the end and nowhere. Nice stretch out. Mark Murphy running him out of bounds. Now, you're, you're saying maybe Green Bay should have kept Tim Harris? Well, Pop got off to a good start. The defense got off to a good start. The last couple of weeks, though, we did the game last week with the L.A. Rams. So far today against Troy Aikman, the only way they've gotten heat on Troy Aikman and a hit on Troy Aikman has been with a safety or a linebacker blitzing. It has not been with a defensive lineman or a guy that lines up as an end of the defense. I think they missed that pure pass rush ability of a Tim Harris here in Green Bay. Second and ten for the Cowboys. Aikman complete to Novacek, and Novacek for the first down. Dragged down from behind by Roland Mitchell. Now, I don't think anybody would certainly compare Bryce Pop athletically to Tim Harris. So do you think it's the system that's benefiting Bryce Pop? The system's worked quite a bit. I mean, he's also a hard worker. He's got a good low move and a lot of good things. But this is a situation in a ball game, you need a big gun. You need a stud pass rusher to make the offense worry about it. Off the fingertips of Michael Irvin, who will be second and 10. Ball at the 28 of Green Bay. About another five yards, I would think, and they were in Ken Willis's field goal territory. We know already today he's missed a 40-yarder. 
So that would mean we have to get we have to get Willis down here around the 20-yard line to get into his comfort zone. On the season, the birthday boy does have a 54-yarder that coming in the first game of the year against Cleveland. And of course, that 54-yarder tied the Dallas club record. Second and 10 from the 28. Complete to Urban. Urban with the first down. Down to about the 14. A 15-yard pass play. Chuck Cecil on the tackle. And the Packers are lucky Chuck Cecil did get his arms around or just get a shoulder on Irvin on that play because he definitely would have scored if Cecil would not have brought him down. Come in right here. We saw him push off earlier, but watch him working on Leroy Butler right here and push off the right shoulder of Butler. Right there. Good push off move by Irvin. He gets through. Now watch Cecil come blurring in here. That was a saving tackle because Michael Irvin had a clear path to the end zone. I think he would have been able to get by Vinnie Clark and score. So the Cowboys have the ball marked at the 13 of Green Bay with 53 seconds left in the first half. Two timeouts remaining. This is first and 10. Complete now incomplete to Novacek, the intended receiver. Just, Murphy on the play. Just a hair behind him, James. He put that ball right about in the armpit, shoulder pad area of Novacek. If he'd have let him out around the numbers a little bit more, Novacek would have been able to catch that ball and turn more upfield. Watch the very end of this right here, and you'll see the ball come in. Aikman zips this thing over. Watch where it hits Novacek. He's got to make that twisting, turning move right then, and he catches him right there on the shoulder pad near the left armpit. Well, Novacek, 6'4", 230, seventh year out of Wyoming. Agile type. North Turner compares it to Pete Hollihan. He had the LA Rams. So he, he says he's Hollihan with speed. On second and ten. And Aikman gets rid of it. Ryan Noble on top of him. Threw it in the direction of Michael Urban. I'll tell you, James, the only guy with a chance to catch that one, he was throwing that thing away. We got our cameraman on the cart right down there in the end zone. He was the closest receiver to that football. Maybe an ex-Milwaukee Bucks player by the name of Paul McKeskey at 7-1 might have had a shot at it. Hey, don't, don't talk bad about McKeskey. He's from my old high school. I knew that. <laughs> Dallas with a third down coming up. One of five in third down conversions. That signal coming in from the sideline has got to be a good 60 yards away. I think here you go to Urban or Novacek and you go into the end zone. Novacek, and that's exactly what they do. Touchdown, Dallas. Aikman to Novacek. I wouldn't call that an incredibly conservative call in the red zone. There's an opportunity to go for a first down or to go for six. And Jimmy Johnson, Norv Turner, and Troy Aikman, they decide the heck with a first down. Let's take what they're giving us. What they're giving us is a chance for a touchdown. And Novacek takes advantage of it with a nice catch. And Jerry Holmes at only 178, too light to do the job there. Willis comes on for the point after. And the Cowboys move out in front with 41 seconds remaining in the first half by two touchdowns over the Packers. Peck, leading receiver among tight ends in the NFC, led the NFL last year with 59 receptions on the scoring end of that pass from Troy Aikman. And Novacek is a very sure-handed receiver. How sure-handed is this guy? How many tight ends do you see holding for extra points and field goals? He is the holder for the Dallas Cowboys. They have so much confidence in his hands and in his ball control and his poise, they use him to do, as their holder. Well, who is it with Minnesota that was nicknamed Palmala, Hassan Jones? Hassan Jones. Well, they definitely ought to give Novacek a nice name like that. Seven. And a leaping attempted tackle that Sikahema breaks and still on his feet. An excellent return by Vi Sikahema across the 41. Finally tackled by Derek Brownlow. A 34-yard return by Vi Sikahema. 
We talked about this being a bit of a redemption period after last week from Vaisik and Heyman. From here on, it's all him. Look at that. They're diving at him. They're grabbing him. They're trying for his legs. They're trying for his jersey. He will not be tackled. And luckily for Dallas, Brownlow just gets in there and gets it from behind where second hammock couldn't do anything about it and couldn't see him. 32 seconds left in the first half of play. Green Bay trailing by two touchdowns. To Workman. And Workman run out of bounds about four yards shy of the first down marker. 24 seconds remaining. And they're right about the 50-yard line, James, and to get right around Chris Jackie field goal range, I think conservatively, you've got to talk about them getting to the 30-yard line, which means they, they need about another 23 yards to get in field position. Jackie could kick one around 50-52, but as they say, that is pushing the envelope, and the wind really won't be a factor here in this stadium because in this bowl right now, it is not blowing much at all. Packers with three timeouts remaining. Second and five, high snap, Keel decides to keep it, has the first down. And timeout called by Green Bay with 17 seconds remaining. Chilly conditions here at Milwaukee County Stadium. And the Packers still with the goose egg on the scoreboard, trailing the Dallas Cowboys 14 zip. Along with Randy Cross, I'm James Brown. And coming up on the NFL Today Halftime Report, Greg and Terry will bring all the scores, highlights, and, of course, the latest information from around the league. And Andrea Joyce will check in. She'll have a report on the Atlanta Braves, a team that just took the National League West crown. And that I don't want to talk about. My, mm -hmm. my team let me down. I know it. They completely laid an egg, and I know they're happy in my home city of San Francisco. But not, nothing pleases them more than to ruin the Dodgers' year. You and a number of other people were hoping that Strawberry and Eddie Murray and company will be there. But the Braves, boy, what a story there from last to first. We're still 14, away, 14 yards away from our target area, James. The ball's on the 44. They need to get to the 30 to be an effective field goal range. Three down linemen for the Cowboys on first and ten for the pack. And Workman. Workman about a yard shy, yard and a half shy of the first down marker. And Green Bay burns off another timeout, leaving one with ten seconds remaining. Now Chris Jackie's longest career-wise, a 53-yarder. That came against the Rams last year. His longest attempted field goal this year which was no good, was a 48-yard. 53 is about what he'd be attempting right here. And what they'll have to settle for, unless they can get a quick pass. 10 seconds is not enough time to run an effective running play and then get the referee's attention. You're really pushing it. You're taking a big chance to run a runner run and then try to get a timeout from the ref. What they need to do, I think, is run a sideline type pattern or a quick pass, and Blair Keel has got to get right in the referee's face and get a timeout right now. So how many defensive backs do you think will see position near the sideline? Or both? I think yes is the answer to that question, James. There will be plenty of them. Now, there's not a happy camper right there. I think what you're seeing, Jimmy, a little displeased by the performance of his defense here late. They've not put very much pressure on Blair Keel. And as far as their zone coverage is underneath, they look very loose and very sloppy right now. Keel inside handoff. Trying to get out of bounds and does with four seconds remaining. The workman takes it to about the 24 yard line. Boy, what a play call. My goodness. No, nobody can say Lindy and Fani is not coming into this game conservative and Ooh. is not taking some chances. Gutsy call, it worked out, it worked fine. Just like declining that penalty on the other side and making Dallas go for it on third down again and giving Aikman another shot. Chris Jackie is now around 42 yards out, and that is easily within his range. Slight right to left wind blowing, but it really should not be a factor. And as Randy Cross stated, Chris Jackie attempting a 42-yard field goal. It's up. And it's good. Good play call by Lindy Infante, and that's the end of the first half. 
with the score. Jimmy Johnson's Cowboys on top of the Packers, 14 to three. Greg and Terry will be along after this. Perhaps we'll be back on Thursday when the uh, Packers entertain Chicago, Chicago Bears. I talked to him before the game, and Mikowski says, hey, I'll be available. I could play today if they get some injuries, but they want me to be available for the Thursday night game against the Bears. That's our main focus for me right now. And there's Jimmy Johnson we talked about. He's not happy. Look at him right now. Arms are folded, little body language working there. And you know Jimmy Johnson went in that locker room and just started ripping, telling guys, hey, you let down at the end of that half. You are ineffective. Whether they were or not is irrelevant. It's an opportunity for a head coach to get a team that is favored, that is ahead, and keep them focused and keep them up. I guess going back to the top of the show when we said he wants his team to be cautiously confident. Ken Willis to kick off for the Cowboys. Sikahema and Wilson back. And Wilson from the 18. Across the 30. Wilson could be gone. Touchdown, Green Bay, no flags. An 82-yard kickoff return by Charles Wilson, alias Sweetie. disrupts it. Watch when he catches the ball. He will head right in here into the middle. Watch the gap open up right in here in the Dallas kickoff team. They're being aggressive. Look at that gap right there in the dirt infield. Wilson sees that. Then it's just Willis. Now watch Willis will be on the ground. He slips. He falls. That's it. Now wait a minute, Charles. Don't start celebrating too soon. You still got people on your tail. He tucks it back in. Now he gets confident. Now I can start high five. The man who has a penchant for new shoes, roughly a new pair every couple of weeks, therefore the nickname Sweet Feet. And was pretty nifty on that run indeed. Now a four point ball game. And Randy, you talk about Jimmy Johnson trying to shake his guys to reality in the conversation at halftime. Reason enough right there. Chris Jackie picking off to the Cowboys. Touchback by Dixon and the Cowboys will start from their own 20. And this doesn't look like a noisy stadium, but I can tell you from experience, when you play in here and this crowd gets into the game, as now they are into the game, they can make life very miserable in this particular end zone coming this way. That crowd in the end zone can get screaming, they can get loud, and it can make really tough for the, deep, for the offensive team to hear the signals. Cowboys keep it on the ground as Smith takes it ahead for about two. We'll bring up a second and eight. The Dallas offense seems to be trying to make a point with Emmett Smith, trying to run him inside, figuring eventually they're going to pop that big play. He is a guy that's gone 70. He's gone 60. But as solid as this Packer defense is in the middle, they're going to have to go back to what they were doing in the first half. That's hitting Novacek, hitting the back out of the backfield, and bringing the receivers underneath in the zones. 
to Smith. Run out of bounds about four yards shy of the first down marker. Run out of bounds by Matt Brock. We talked about that effective Green Bay run defense. Dallas did not have a rushing first down in the first half at all. Novacek for the first down, dropped by Roland Mitchell. Novacek on the completion. Mitchell Boy, is Novacek a weapon and a half? Well, he's a guy kind of like a Keith Jackson. That you have the ability to take a big man like that, six foot four, 240 pounds, and you can put him in the slot. You can almost go into a nickel offense with a spread formation when you're on first or second down because of that ability. And Aikman and he have a great relationship on the field. Troy seems to be conscious of his position on the field. No matter where and when it is, he knows exactly when J where Jay Novacek is. As well, he should be aware. Six catches for 60 yards, Jay Novacek. Smith, the tailback, out of the eye. Play action. Aikman falls at about the 37-yard line, three-yard gain, and Aikman a little slow getting up. Well, he went into his quarterback, protect me and don't let him hit me, slide there at the end of his run. He might have caught a knee in the back, it looked like. What do you do? <laughs> hey, let's take another look at it right here. Here comes Troy. Now watch Bennett right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that left knee, went right into his lower back. One more time. Right, look at that knee, left knee right there into Troy's lower back, and that was such a cause that little discomfort. On second and seven, Smith looks like he dove enough yards for the first down. And that is the first rushing first down of the afternoon for the Cowboys. There's a Dallas backup quarterback, Steve Bierlein who's been had a great situation. You know, talking about Mikowski. Mikowski says him before the game, he goes, you know, you're lucky. You spend part of your career now, you've been in L.A. Where do you go after that? You go to Dallas. I've been up here in Green Bay the whole time. I mean, oh, Green Bay is a fun town. He says, but you've been in party towns. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Mikowski makes his home in the offseason down in Florida. First and 10, the pitch to Smith. And Smith, maybe a yard. Johnny Holland on the stop. 15 carries, 35 yards in the afternoon for Emmett Smith. Boy, the yardage hard to come by for young Mr. Smith. And we were talking about Bierlein. He was over there trying to warm up a little bit, get his arm ready to go just in case Troy Hakeman is a little bit slowed or more slowed by that little knee in the back he took. Very gracious Green Bay folks here. It looks like they brought in the uh, Milwaukee Brewers baseball organist here. Second and eight. Ball at the 46. Complete for the first down, and guess who? Jay Novacek. Mark Murphy. Now, Mark Murphy talked before the game about how he's played against a number of great tight ends. He's not playing against a more effective, he's not played against any more effective a tight end than Jay Novacek. Well, there are better tight ends from, a, from an all-around standpoint. From a guy you might want to say, hey, he can block real good, but not many tight ends can do this. Look at this. This is Jay Novacek. This is a tight end flanked out as a wide receiver. How do you really figure that one? If you're going to play soft against a guy like that, 6'4", 240 with soft hands who can catch, you're just going to be giving up 8, 10 yards every time on those receptions, that kind of receiver. 10.05 left in a third period of play. Cowboys on top by four. First and 10. Aikman. Throwing for the intended receiver, Alexander Wright. Wright came to the inside. Aikman threw to the outside. And Brian, Brian Noble saying, oh, could that be more grounding or what? He threw that one away. There was nobody near it. Well, Brian, I think when you look at the films, you might have to agree. Troy was a victim of a zig when he thought there was going to be a zag. That zig will get you when there's supposed to be zagging every time. 
Well, you worked that dictionary nicely, Randy. I was going to ask you about some of the other esoteric terms, the drag and the scrape, and you've got the zig and the zag. Second and ten. Smith, the lone back. Complete to right. And Wright, trying to run to the first down marker, winds up about two and a half yards shy of it. Leroy Butler on the tackle. And we're seeing Dallas do right now what they did at the end of the second half. That's moving the ball down the field with short passes underneath. This is the kind of thing North Turner and Troy Aikman like to do. North Turner was under Ernie Zampezi, who really learned that offense. Before him, from Don Coriel. And it's just something that's gone on and on and on. And each coach, and there you see North Turner on the left side of your screen right there, each coach that has learned it and brought it somewhere else has further refined it. And he's refined this offense, especially to the particular talents of this Dallas Cowboy offense. From the 32 of Green Bay, third and three. Smith. And he's going to be short. Chuck Cecil up there, assisting Robert Brown. Boy, Cecil likes to stick his head in there, does he not? Oh, he's a guy, especially with his size, he's six foot, about 190 pounds, you wouldn't think so, but he can hit like a linebacker. The thing that really sticks out to me here is Dallas keeps insisting that they can run against this defense. They're being so effective with their short passing game on a third and three situation, you've got to think pass. On fourth and three, they're going. And if I'm a defensive coach for the, De for the Green Bay Packers, I'm looking to get covered Novacek and Irvin and let somebody else get this first down. Fourth and two, play action. In the hands and out of the hands of Alfredo Roberts. He was there for the first down. And the hit applied by who? And that's exactly what they did. They put Mark Murphy on Alfredo Roberts, took the other guys away. Roberts couldn't come up with the play. There's home away from home from Milwaukee County Stadium here. Packers trailing by four to the Cowboys. And if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you got to be thinking right now, well, hey, why didn't they go for a 47, 48-yard field goal with Willis in that situation? To be honest with you, I think it was a good decision by Jimmy Johnson. 47, 48 yards is at the outside of the envelope for Keith Willis in that situation. If he misses it, you still give it up. If you get the first down, you've got the momentum, you're moving, and you're going for six. So the Packers start from their own 31. Allen Rice, the lone back, and the ball carrier. Finds a little room, and Rice across the 35 to about the 36. A six-yard run by Allen Rice will bring up a second and four. Stopped by Vincent Smith. Rice and Hope had a little conversation before the game. Of course, both the ex-Vikings players. And that play was designed to go right off of tackle, but it was a good job by Allen Rice of bouncing things out to the right and utilizing his blocks from his wide receivers. In that case, Sterling Sharp getting a nice block on the outside on Isaac Holt. Keith Woodside, the tailback in the eye formation. Play action. Keel going up top for Kemp. He's got him complete. And a flag on a play. That is a personal foul going to the head like that. A blatant attempt in that case of trying to go to the head and hoping for a turnover. Tried to decapitate him. That, of course, being Isaac Holt. And Blair Keel took a heck of a shot on that last play. Watch at the very end of this play, coming from the left side of the screen. I believe it's Tolbert. Right there. Gets a hit on him. Watch Kemp catch it. Now watch this. Right to the head by Holt. That is blatant, and that is also 15 yards. One more time on this hit. It's Jim Jeffco putting the pressure on Blair Keel. And Ike Holt got up in that last play holding his right arm as he might have injured it a little bit, and you could see why as hard as he put that helmet against the, his, his arm against the helmet of the receiver. So a 35-yard pass play from Keel to Kemp, and you tack on to 15, a 50-yard play. Ball now positioned at the 14 of the Cowboys. 7.43 remaining in the third quarter. And here's a situation where a lack of a running game can really affect you. If you can't run the ball, teams know you have to pass it. Out of the eye. Play action. Keel. Drop. And give the credit to Tony Tolbert. 
Tobert had a little help from Jim Jeffcoat. You want to talk about something that'll get a defense to chuckle a little bit? How about a play action pass a play action pass from a team that can't run the ball? How much of a suck up does that get from the linebackers? Del Rio in the middle is not even looking at the quarterback and thinking about it being a run the whole time. And Tolbert, with everybody covered downfield, has a chance to get field as he steps up and tries to run. Sack number two on the season for Tony Tolbert. You ought to give half of that to Jim Jeffco. Here comes Jeffco, and Jeffco gets a fumble. And it's recovered by Colbert. So Jim Jeffcoat, who could have gotten credit for the first sack, gets his own sack, and that's number two for Jeffcoat. Blair Keel gets up slow, and rightfully so. He takes another vicious hit from Jeffcoat, who come all the way out here. Now watch, you can't see him getting double teamed. He got double teamed and still got through. The ball was clearly out before Keel got to the ground, and Tolbert alertly takes advantage of it. Another case of play action fat pass. Watch a play action pass. Who are you fooling? You got to be running that play action pass just because there's a route that you like. But if you play action pass, the most important thing is you got to have pass protection, and he didn't get it. Emmett Smith, the ball carrier for Dallas. Seven yards run on the play by Emmett Smith, finally stopped by Tony Bennett and Chuck Cecil. So take a look at Blair Keel. Packers trailing by four with 6.38 remaining, and there's still a down player on the field for the Cowboys. I can't see if it's Alfredo Roberts. It looks like Alfredo Roberts, the big tight end, fourth-year player out of Miami. This is attitude check time right now for the Green Bay Packers defense. They've played well against this Dallas Cowboy offense, but as their offense insists on putting them in position or after position after position after these turnovers they've got three they're around the worst in the league as it was can they stay up to the strain and the stress of being tested against a quality offense like the Dallas Cowboys and while the medical staff attends to Alfredo Roberts we'll take a break Cowboys second and two from their own 37 pitch to Smith trying to juke doesn't work Smith and Smith, maybe a yard on the play. Alfredo Roberts did walk off under his own power, so that's good news for the Cowboy fans. They're taping up that ankle because he got hit by somebody coming in from the inside as he was blocking on that first play. We'll take a look at this here. Here's Alfredo Roberts. Now watch the contact will come right in here at his left ankle. Watch this. He's blocking. He's got the strain of his body, and right there, the whip comes right down there around his ankle. It causes a little bit of a sprain. But he's up and seems okay. Third and one for the Cowboys. Novacek in motion. Aikman looking for Irvin all the way and has him for the first down. And there's... Is that Jerry Holmes? And there's now a Packer player down. A lot of that was the contact between Holmes and Irvin. Mm -hmm. Holmes very, very light. Hey, it can be dangerous in there, James, especially if you're a cornerback and you've got guys at, cor at safety like Cecil and Murphy that like to light people up and hit them. You can sometimes be the recipient of the hit rather than the wide receiver when the two of you are coming across the middle there. Those safeties that like to hit, they'll hit anything that's moving. And unfortunately, if you're moving, you could be a victim. And Holmes at only 178 pounds. But he's been in the league 10 years. And you on look, the sidelines right now, and Vinnie Clark is in his place. You look at Jerry Holmes, 178 looks like what he would weigh with all that stuff on. With about 15, 20 pounds of pads, then you figure he'd weigh about 178. He's very frail and a little dirt. There's Vinnie Clark, the rookie out of Ohio State, number one draft pick for the Packers. Aikman on first down, throws it complete to Rod Awalt. And Awalt fumbles it out of bounds after getting the necessary yardage for the first down. And boy, there's a close game going on between Washington and Chicago. Let's get the particulars from Greg. All right, JB, at Soldier Field, you saw the score. This is how the Bears tighten it up. Neil Anderson leaps from a yard out. And with the extra point, the Bears have pulled it within three. It's 10-7 Redskins as they begin the fourth. James? 
Craig Gregg and talk about smash mouth football. That's what you were talking about before when John Madden was talking about teams getting conservative in the red zone. That's Redskins and Chicago football. Well, if the run's not working for Chicago or Washington, they could always run it. And if that's not working, they'll probably run it. And if that doesn't work, if last resort, they'll send it to wide receiver. Second and one. And Dallas runs it and gets the first down. Emmett Smith. You know, I had no idea that Emmett Smith was as, as vocal and as outgoing as he turned out to be last night, but a lot of that had to be because of his best friend. I tell you, he, he might not have been, no, might not have been. He was not as outgoing when he got here until he met Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin and he, I mean, they should do a situation comedy at CBS with the, with the, the Eminem show. No doubt. Emmett and Michael, it would be a gas. Randy, they were nonstop. Answered every question without having a question asked. Answered each other's questions before being asked. On first and ten. Aikman going up top. Complete to Novacek. Was he inbounds? Indeed he was. Novacek down inside the 15 for the big first down. And Jerry Holmes with a little assistance from Leroy Butler defending. Eight catches, 100 yards on the afternoon for Jay Novacek. And what they're doing with Novacek is there's once again, they're using him as a wide receiver. They're using him as a tight end. Here he comes out of the tight end position, immediately breaks for the sideline, and look what happens here. Just great concentration. He's looking for the ball. Jerry Holmes, the cornerback, never turned back to see if the ball was coming. A deserved break. Ball is marked at the 13 of Green Bay, first and 10. Aikman to Johnston, and Johnston, maybe two yards on a play, down to the 11. Boy, Aikman did a nice job of not panicking with the pressure being applied by Matt Brock. With the hits this guy's taken in the last three, three years, short of hitting him with a truck, you're not going to be able to make Troy Aikman flinch. But look at that shot Brock hits him with. He hits him right in the upper body, right around the face mask with a helmet, which jolts his head back. The one thing we heard all the players say about Troy Aikman in terms of improvement, Randy, was that he was more talkative this year. Well, in the huddle, I think as, a, as an offensive player, he's much more confident. As a football player, he's much more outgoing, and he's a leadership quarterback. He's very assertive. Smith on second down. Smith inside the five before being up there. Fumble! Now... Did the ground cause that one? If so, then it will still be Dallas ball. Let's take a look. We'll have to see that again. He was upended, and it appeared the ball came loose as he struck the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, it still looks like Dallas ball. Let's see it one more time. You'll be coming right at you. Watch him cut back. He sees his hole. Good blocking. Now watch him get upended right there. Yep, the ground caused that mm -hmm. fumble. That ball came out after he struck the ground. Mm -hmm. Good call. So the ball is marked at the four. Position, 76. Vinegrad, the eligible receiver in. Smith, the ball carrier. And folks, he doesn't make it. As a matter of fact, he loses a yard on the play. You're going to see Jimmy Johnson, I believe, go for a field goal right here. No more chances. He's going to have Keith Willis come in here, Ken Willis, and get himself a short field goal. Mm-hmm. Boy, that Green Bay run defense tops in the league, as you mentioned before, with an average of only 2.5 against it. I think deservedly so, and if you ask the Cowboy players after this game's over, no matter how it comes out, they will be very impressed with this defense, and they see some good ones. Washington, I mean, Washington, New York, Philadelphia, this has got to rank up there right up with any of So Willis attempting a 23-yarder. High snap, and it's good. So Ken Willis boots the Cowboys out in front by a touchdown. On the strength of that 23-yard field goal by Ken Willis, leads it by the score of 17 to 10. And the note on that scoring drive, Dallas took 544 off of the clock. 106 remaining in the third here. And Willis set to kick off. A line drive. And boy, talk about, is that a line in the dream, Randy? <laughs> or a nightmare? <laughs> uh, 
Game one of the National League Championship Series comes your way Wednesday night. The Killer Bees, Bobby Bonilla, and MVP candidate Barry Bonds lead the Pirates against the surprising Atlanta Braves and their famous Tomahawk Chop. Game one of the National League Championship Series Wednesday night right here at 8.30 Eastern on CBS. You know, I tell you, you talk about Barry Bonds being an MVP, can MVP candidate. I think you got to look at Pendleton from the Braves as far as what he's done for a team. That's my MVP for 1991. First and 10 for the Packers. Rice. No gain on the play. What's taking place between Philadelphia and Tampa? Greg Gumbel knows. All right, James, in Tampa, Vinny Testaverde will lose the handle leg as he gets hit. Seth Joyner of the Eagles recovers in the end zone. The Eagles lead at 13-0, and the quarterback shuffle continues. Chris Chandler has replaced Testaverde at quarterback for the Bucks. James? All right, Greg, and I know Terry Bradshaw would love to have at least a couple of weeks to spend with Vinny Testaverde. So there's only one, one thing worse than a quarterback controversy, and that's a head coach getting himself in trouble. And Williamson got the dreaded vote of confidence today from his owner. On second down, Keel going up top for Sharp. And way short. Well, there wasn't much that Blair Keel could do about that one right there. He had to throw that one away because he was getting all sorts of pressure. He held up all another half a second. That was a sack. Instead of having a second down situation, he'd have had a loss, a big loss of about 9, 10 yards. You think Sterling knows that? Well, he's over there probably telling Lindy on the sideline, I was open, I was open. Six DBs in for Dallas. Four down linemen. On third down, third and 11 for the pack. And Keel loses the handle on it, still gets rid of it, throws it too low in the direction of Jeff Query. And the fans letting Keel and the Packers know how they feel. The best addition for the Dallas Cowboys in 1991, without a doubt, has been Tony Casillas. They got him from Atlanta. He's a happy ball player working against Hallstrom. Hallstrom sees a blitz coming and just lets Casillas go. And if not for that infield where his footing was not good, I think Tony might have gotten home and gotten a sack on Blair Keel. Casillas, one happy camper with the Cowboys now as Paul McJulien on to punt for the Packers. Shepard waiting back. And Shepard, there catches it at about the 26. A 43-yard punt by Paul McJulien. And McJulien has been doing a pretty nice job since he's been up here in the league. First year in the league. Tried six years to latch on. Lindy Infante likes him a lot. What he would like more, Infante, that is, points on the board. And something he's got from McJulien that he hasn't gotten from any other punter here since he's been in Green Bay is some long distance kicks. 50 yards plus. McJulian has specialized in those earlier this year in 91. Six of them at 50 or longer specifically as you take a look at Jimmy Johnson. 0-2 against the Packers. Looking for his third straight victory. Smith, the lone back. First and 10. Ball at the 26. This is Smith. And Smith looks to be tackled right at the first down marker. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Dallas 17, Green Bay 10. Our coverage will continue after this message. Start of the fourth quarter here at Milwaukee County Stadium, a 17-10 ball game, Cowboys on top. And the Cowboys have controlled this third quarter as they controlled the first half. Look at that time of possession. That is incredible. If not for a very poor special team play, you know, we're looking at 17 to three. We're not looking at 17 to 10. So Dallas needs to keep doing what they've been doing, trying the running game, getting Novacek, getting Johnston, getting Smith on the, the short swings, and forcing Green Bay to stop those guys. First and 10 from the 36. Smith. A blast up the middle by Emmett Smith, stopped by Johnny Holland, nine yards picked up by Emmett Smith, and Smith trying to run hard toward that 100-yard mark. He's got 75 on the afternoon. A carry, 23 carries by Emmett Smith. And when he carries 20 times plus, like you saw on that last graphic, the Cowboys are 7-0. 7-0. 
Well, if stats are right, the stats are for losers, right? Mm -hmm. On second down, Smith has the first down by a bunch. So Emmett Smith just adds. Oh, let's call it another um, six yards to that. He's got 81 on the afternoon. And what we're seeing right now is that NFC East style of football. It would appear the Dallas Cowboys are blasting this way with their blockers. The holes are opening up right here for Emmett Smith to come through, and they're starting to wear the Packers' defense down. The Packers need to get a second breath. They're not getting off the blocks as crisply and as effectively as they were in the first half. Ball at the 47 of Green Bay. First and 10 for the Cowboys out of the eye. The pitch to Smith. And Smith, nowhere to go that time. As a matter of fact, he lost two on that. On that particular play, too, James. Green Bay came up with an eight to nine man front and told Dallas, I'm sorry, that time he ain't running. And I don't care how good a running back you are or how good an offensive line blocking you are for the run, you are not going to run when there's eight or nine guys up. And a Dallas player still down on the field on his hands and knees. It looks to be big Nate Newton. And Nate, when we were talking about cautiously confident coming into the game, he was one of the guys who said he wanted this game badly, as well as a few more, thinking he's played in the league a long time. He's only a sixth-year player, but he says, hey, that's really nine because of my couple of years in the USFL. Well, he says, I got my six years with the Cowboys and a couple of years in the USFL. He goes, but these Jimmy Johnson training camps take a lot of years off you. Do they wear you down? And now we're going to get a chance to look at the big rookie, Eric Williams, out of Central State. Six foot six, 320 pounds. Look at Nate. Nate's, Nate's testing yeah. either that right ankle or that right that knee. That right knee, yeah. He's trying to make sure he hasn't done much damage. Very gingerly walking on that. And you talk about the big rookie coming in in his place. Newt at 6'3", listed at 322. That 79 is getting stressed out across the back of that jersey. That's a big fella right there in Big Williams. But this could be a critical loss for the Dallas Cowboys if Nate Newton is hurt and misses significant time because they don't want to have a rookie in there in front of Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith has been getting a lot of fine blocking from this man, Nate Newton, who is having a Pro Bowl type of year in front of his great running back. And Newton was just talking about how, for the first time in a long time, they've had that line together from training camp through the season. Second and 13 for Dallas. 13-21 left. Cowboys on top by seven. Quick out to Smith. Slips between Stephen and Noble and picks up four on the play. Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson told us about his big rookie, Williams. If he does one thing well, that's pass block right now at this point. He's got good quick feet, good hands. Brock tries a spin move on him, but Williams stays with him just long enough. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm thinking three to five step drop. I don't want to get caught in too many third and real long like this, because that means seven step drop, and that means a short corner if Williams gets beat. He's about four yards shy. Johnny Holland tripped him up. So Mike Saxon will come on to punt for the Cowboys. And the Packers decided, hey, we got a rookie here. We got an inexperienced player. Let's give him a stunt. Let's see how he handles the stunt. He's got Bryce Pop working against him. He goes in. He stuffs Pop. Stays with him. Good job. Mm -hmm. Big guy's dancing well playing next to Big John Giesick, number 63 at right guard. Well, Jimmy Johnson said we would see Eric Williams a lot today anyway. Oh, he wanted to get him some playing time. He realizes this is one of my linemen of the future. Saxon on to punt. Sick of him a back to receive, waiting at his own 10. And a nice one by Saxon. Can he keep it back inbound? No. Takes a Green Bay roll. So the Packers will operate from their own 20, 11.37 remaining. Game summary, Randy, the most important ones there, the turnovers by Green Bay and what Dallas has done with those turnovers. They've gotten 14 points off them. 
with Ray Horton's interception return. That was a critical error. But Green Bay's got to do something right now. Green Bay has got to say, whether it's running or whether it's throwing, we've got to get this ball down the field. We're in this ball game. We're by no means have we limited ourselves in spite of our turnovers, in spite of the fact we haven't had the ball very much. We are in this game. We've got a chance to go right down the field and tie it up. You know, one thing that sticks out to me, as much as Green Bay has been battered about the lack of a running game. Dallas, although being stuffed a number of times by Green Bay's defense, it's the commitment to the runner they're showing. A lot of it's attitude. We talked about that earlier, James. Offensive linemen need the opportunity. They've got to have an attitude like a defensive lineman has an attitude. So does an offensive lineman. He's got to be half mad most of the time. First and ten. Keel on the handoff. And Rice getting up near Rice the 24. Here. And Randy, we talked about those turnovers and how the Cowboys have capitalized. Boy, Ray Horton did a nice job. Ray Horton right here. We talked about his read on Blair Keel. Blair Keel comes back, and he gets this read. Watch him break on the ball before the pass is ever thrown. Right now, he's moving. He was watching Blair Keel. Blair Keel gave his location away, and Horton made him pay for it. And, of course, that occurred back in the second quarter. Second and five here with 10.59 left in a fourth quarter play. And the handoff to Workman. And Workman pulling his way up. Workman about a half a yard shy of the first down marker. I wonder what's taking place between the Bears and the Skins. Let's check in with Greg. All right, JV, at Soldier Field, the Rippin' to Art Monk combo clicks for the second time today. This one five yards in the touchdown. 17-7, Washington leads it. All the highlights coming up on the postgame show. James? All right, Greg, and of course, those highlights include Philly and Tampa, Minnesota, Detroit. This game here, Greg and Terry with all the action for you coming up on the NFL Today postgame show. Third and one. in motion and the pitch to Workman and Workman trying to get to the first down marker and with the second effort he does Isaac Holt on the hit let's see where the ball is marked but it looked with that second effort Randy that he may have gotten it if he got there he just barely got there because the Dallas defense managed to string him out very effectively it's all in the placement and that seems to be right next to the yard marker And it is a first down for the Packers. Let's look at it one more time. They're stringing him out. They're stringing him out. He tries to power through. That doesn't work. Ike Holt gets sloughed off. And right there with that little extra effort after his contact with Holt, Workman got that first down all by himself. First down. We we talk, a, will he peak there with his uh, running back? When we talked about the time of possession. Look at this difference. Mm -hmm. There's 14, 15 minutes in time of possession and a 20-play difference in number of plays run. 9.47 left. Dallas on top, 17-10. Rice, the lone back. Keel looking for Sharp. Nearly intercepted by the rookie Larry Brown out of TCU. And Larry Brown certainly had a lot of words of praise about him coming from Jimmy Johnson. He said if, in fact, any team tries to test him, he thinks he'll come through with the big play. I talked to Dave Wanstead, too, before the game, James, and he was telling me all this guy has done coming in as a rookie, he makes interceptions in scrimmages, he makes interceptions in passes, he's made plenty of big plays. He didn't make that interception on that play, but it was a very critical play. This guy is a guy that's always around the football. Second and ten. Three wideouts for the pack. Looking for Sharp again. And boy, Keel and Sharp definitely not on the same page today. Larry Brown right on top of Sharp again. That ball was badly overthrown, and luckily for Sharp. I'm sure he would like to have a chance to go for this one. But if Blair Keel would have put this one in and would have had it right on the numbers to Sterling Sharp, it might have been an interception for Brown, number 24, because he had every chance in the world to step in front of that one if it's on time. Third and ten. In 
incomplete intended receiver Charles Wilson and guess who was shadowing him again Larry Brown well the Green Bay Packers are perhaps finding out why teams have been testing Isaac Holt why they've been going to the other side of the defense so much this is a very good rookie and we're in that number 24 that uh, I believe ever so more here with the Dallas Cowboys another gentleman that enjoyed a very successful rookie season Meg Julianne on to punt. And it takes a Green Bay bounce and heads out of bounds at about the 30. So it'll be Cowboys ball when we come back. Team has come close the last two weeks, losing the last two ball games by five. Packers trailing the Cowboys by seven right now with 9-18 left in the game. Oh, and Dallas all over him in stats, but like James said, this game is still very close. Dallas can take this ball, though, drive with it, and go away and take a lot of time off the clock. Complete to Novacek, and with that completion, Troy Aikman has hit a career high with 26 completions in a game. He's 26 of 261 yards. Game one of the American League Championship Series comes your way Tuesday night. Kirby Puckett leads the Minnesota Twins and their Homer Hankey fans against the slugging Joe Carter and the Toronto Blue Jays. Game one of the American League Championship Series Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern right here on CBS. And Smith with the run of a champion. Down to about the 36-yard line, Emmett Smith finally stopped by Mark Murphy, and boy, Emmett Smith is looking awfully good thus far. That was a 25-yard run. And what I think I said earlier still applies. This Dallas Cowboy offensive line and Emmett Smith are starting to wear the Packers down. They're just not coming off the blocks. It's the biggest difference. Earlier in this game, the interior guys, the defensive linemen, and the inside linebackers that bounce off those blocks. Dallas has had the ball so much longer They've had the opportunity just to wear them down. Ball at the 36 of Green Bay, and this is Emmett Smith again. And Smith ahead for a couple. Emmett Smith with 106 yards on the afternoon. And Randy, if he keeps up at that pace, he's going to eclipse Tony Dorsett's single season record. He's got a chance. He's going to be the featured player like uh, yesterday when we were talking to Michael Irvin. He says, no, you figure you got 50, 60 plays in the game, right? I said, yeah. He goes, well, this little guy here 20, is going to get at least 25, 30 times. So I've got to ask the coaches, can I have it five, maybe 10 times of the rest of those things that are left? Because you know Emmett's going to touch it a lot. Today, he's touching 30-plus for 27 carries. Second and eight. Aikman gets rid of it under pressure from Sean Patterson and Bryce Pott. And is that a flag? Down at about the 16-yard line. A little holding her contact back there in the defensive backfield. Mm-hmm. And the call is holding against the, the Green Bay Packers. Holding number 54 defense. Five yards, automatic first down. That against Scott Steven. And Steven has had a very decent year. Fifth year player out of Arizona State. And he was a little bit hobbled off that one play. But here, watch these guys right here. Here's Novacek. Keep an eye on these two guys the whole time. There's Steven. Look at him right there. He wasn't holding him, he was holding his hand. That was the problem. The results first and ten. Smith trying to cut back. Tackled by Robert Brown. No gain on the play. Robert Brown, 10th year player out of Virginia Tech, as you take a look at the Jets knocking off Cleveland. Boy, Bruce Cosmos Club really should have had a couple of other big victories under their belt as well. You know, they're a team that's got the potential to be a 500, maybe a 9-7 and seven type ball club this year, but watch out for the New York Jets in 92 and 93. I think between Steinberg and Coslick, they are going to have a powerhouse in New York, and it's not going to be the Giants. Mm -hmm. Second down, ball at the 29 of Green Bay. 6.39 left in the contest. Aikman complete to Novacek. And Novacek racked hard that time by Brian Noble. 
no more progress should have the ball marked at about the 27. Call it the 28. And the, and the Green Bay defense seems to have sort of bowed up here. They gave up that rushing yardage. They looked like they were getting a little bit worn down. And here in the last two plays, they've reasserted themselves. Is this a temporary second win? Or is this something that is just going to go on and on and they'll be able to keep taking advantage of it? Boy, Novacek just continues with it today. Oh. He's got 10 catches for 111 yards right now. And there's Hank Bola, the defensive coordinator. He's got to be concerned. Right now, you find Novacek and you find Irvin. Third down play. Patterson all over top of Aikman, who finds Irvin. And Irvin knocked down by Leroy Butler, three yards shy of the first down marker. Nice tackle by Leroy Butler. And the pack and the Cowboys are well within uh -oh. field goal range right now where the ball is. You're looking at about a 39-yarder for Keith Ken Willis. So Willis, the second-year player out of Kentucky, comes on to attempt to make it a 20 to 10 ball game. And as Randy says, this will make a 39-yard field goal attempt. It's up. And it's good. So Ken Willis boots the Cowboys out in front by 10. These two teams met back in 1989, Christmas Eve at Texas Stadium. And the Packers came away with a 20 to 10 victory. Cowboys leading by the same score right now. Seven plays, 49 yards, 408 off of the clock before that 39 yard field goal by Ken Willis. We talked about the need for the Cowboys to take time off the clock, add to their time of possession lead. They now have an, a 21 minute edge in time of possession, 38 to 17, with 5-10 remaining in the contest. Willis, and this will be Wilson from his own eight. Across the 25, flag on the play, and Willis dropped at about the 30. There is a flag. It's amazing why guys ever even bother to try to get away with pushing people in the back and whatnot on these kickoff returns and punt returns because that's all these guys have to do is to watch them. Stan Kemp. An illegal block below the knees. You're not allowed to get there below block below the knees on a kickoff or punt return. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes with a profile on outrageous radio personality Rush Limbaugh. Following 60 minutes are Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie Fire in the Dark. It's all coming up tonight right here on CBS. And there's no mystery here going into this possession for the Green Bay Packers what they're going to do. We know it up here. The Cowboys know it on the other sideline. The guy down there selling the beer, he knows it. The Green Bay Packers are going to throw the ball, and they're going to throw the ball almost every down. If you see a run, it's going to be a draw from the Green Bay Packers. Now they test their pass blocking abilities. Four wide outs and Bellish that back. Deal complete to Workman, and Workman. Eight yards picked up on a play, call it nine. It'll bring up a second and one. Green Bay's in their hurry up, op hurry up offense, and they do still have all their timeouts, so they're obviously trying to get a quick score here. Keel out of the shotgun to Workman again, and Workman runs for the first down, for the first down. and out of bounds. Ken Norton ran him out. 4:36 left in the game. Packers trailing by 10. Dallas looking for its third straight victory. And remember, here in the last five minutes of, of the game, the first last two minutes of the first half, last five minutes of the, the game itself, the clock will stop when the guy goes out of bounds. Normally, they'll bring the ball back, the set the clock, and first wind time. the clock, or set the ball, wind the clock. Here in the last five minutes, it's completely stopped. <laughs> On first down, Keel to Sharp for another first down, and Sharp runs out of bounds at midfield. Sterling Sharp told us yesterday, you know, or Friday, I'm getting used to being used kind of like in this pattern. They'll throw me one ball in the first quarter, 
Then you won't see me much at all in the second and third quarter. But when things get important and they need a reception, they're going to come back to me because they know I can get it for them. And it's just what he does right now. Hendricks is trying to put a little man coverage and stay tight. He doesn't even put a near tackle on Sterling. All at the 47 of Dallas. Keel to Wilson. Complete inside the 40. Call it the 39 of Dallas. And the clock continues to wind. 416. And if you're a Packer fan, you got to wonder where was this offense for the first three quarters, the way they're effectively moving this ball down the field with the pass. And second and about two to Workman. Workman trying to get to the first down marker. He does. And a flag on a play as Workman gets inside the 25. That's going to be a hold or a clip downfield on a blocker. One of the wide receivers down there trying to do something good, I think, did something wrong. Mm. And you're right. Jeff Query was over in that direction. Mm -hmm. Another example of a critical error at a very bad time for the Green Bay Packers. Holding number 81 on the offense. Repeat second down. We have a very alert producer. In fact, it was Perry Kemp. And that's more of an effort. That, that's an that's a error of effort. Perry Kemp's downfield. He's trying to get a block. He's trying to make a difference, trying to spring his guy that's out there with the ball. You can't fault errors of effort. It's er mental errors that drive coaches crazy. <laughs> Let's take a look at it here. Nice play call by Lindy and Fani and the offensive coaches. Little dump off screen. There's nobody out in front of him blocking. Look at the move he puts on Williams here. Puts a little quiver to him, and then he freezes. There's Kemp right there. What he was doing that he called, that referee, the official on the sideline called, Kemp had his hands outside on the shoulder pads of Isaac Holt. Did not have his hands inside the plane of the receiver. As you take a look at the uh, referee marking it near the first down marker, they mark it off from the point of the infraction. And that's why it's so close to the first down marker there. Randy, you were saying, I guess the fans are asking a question, why not this offense earlier? And Blair Keel indicated to us that he actually seems to operate better in stressful situations given he's so accustomed to coming off of the bench. Well, he said, normally I come in, we're behind, and we're running this type of an offense. This is what I'm used to. Well, maybe the... Uh... Green Bay Packers with Don Mikowski signaling into Blair Keel there and Lindy and Finey next to him ought to think about using the no huddle because their no huddle here efforts are really being effective with, with Blair Keel here at quarterback. They can run out of this formation, little handoffs just like uh, Buffalo does, but they're really using this effectively. And they have not done this all day long. Second and about a half yard. For the first down to Workman and Workman inside the 20, pushed out of bounds. Inside the 15 by Isaac Holt. 3.51 left. A 19-yard play for the Packers. And that is plenty of time. Where the ball is right now on about the 14-yard line. They get a score in here inside of three minutes left in this half. Hmm. I think we got a ball game on our hands here, James. Blair Keel, the top-rated quarterback in the country. Coming out of high school. Hasn't been able to duplicate near that success in the pros. First and 10 from the 13 of the Cowboys. Horton showing blitz. Gets through and pressures complete the shot. Touchdown, Green Bay. No flag. With that touchdown reception, number one of the year for Sterling Sharp. And how sweet it is. We saw a little hand celebration on the sideline between Sterling Sharp and another Green Bay Packer player. He's so happy about that first touchdown, he's not giving him the ball back. Larry Keel will hold for Chris Jackie here for the extra point. And it's good for the Packers. 
draw a little closer, three to be exact, with 3.46 left to play. Now, if you're the Green Bay quarterback, Blair Keel, here's what you're seeing. You know from the outside, they're showing me blitz here and here. Now they're bringing safeties in here. Now watch Sterling Sharp will come across the screen right here and catch this pass. Good read. He knows he has to get rid of it early. Horton's coming free. Watch Sterling Sharp. He will not be denied. He will not be tackled. And the young man, Sterling Sharp, who told us he tried to play every sport there was so that he could get off of the farm. Well, he's happy, too, and he is very happy here in Green Bay. Here's Sterling Sharp one more time. Just a quick little slant. It's his adjustment when he knows there's a blitz, and Blair Keel knew exactly where he was going to be. And the farm, of course, he was referring to back in South Carolina where he grew up. Big fan of Anthony Carter, he says. I think he's got a fair number of fans himself. You know, Sterling said, I'd be crazy to want to go anywhere else but here. The fans in Green Bay, the fans in Milwaukee, he goes, I'm the guy. You know, people always say, I want out of here. Tim Harris, he wanted out of here. So-and-so, he wants out of here. He goes, I don't want out of Green Bay. I want to stay here. I enjoy being the wide receiver, and I love this community. Mm-hmm. From the 10, Shepard. And Shepard diving ahead across the 25 for about the 27. Kurt Larson on the stop. Join us next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern when the NFL on CBS continues with the Saints taking on the Eagles or the Cardinals taking on the Vikings. And remember, it all starts with the NFL today and a look at that rollicky, stone-breaking New Orleans defense. that next Sunday on the NFL Today right here on CBS. Aikman on first down to Emmett Smith and Smith trying to spin move. Stop at about the 28 by Scott Stevens. And this crowd in Milwaukee knows they got to get on their feet and they got to help their Packers as Green Bay calls timeout. They're first leaving them with two. The Cowboys have three. 3.29 left. Lindy and Fonte squad trailing by three. Plenty of time. Now is the time for the Green Bay Packers. They did it on the last possession. They seem to get down there in the red zone and bow up. They can't afford to wait that long now. They've got two more downs. They cannot let Dallas get a first down here. Dallas gets a first down. They're going to win this ball game. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS and the National Football League is prohibited. And today's game was produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Kathy Barreto. Ably assisted by Suzanne Smith and Harry Wagner. Jimmy Johnson looking on. A second down situation for the Cowboys. Comes the blitz. Novacek, who else? 11 Morris catches Morris. on the day for Novacek, and he looks to be about a half a yard shy of the first down marker. No, they spot it. They spot it, and it looks like it may be. Randy, is that close or not? It's got to be real close. I'd be surprised if they don't measure this one and bring them chains. Green mm -hmm. But Green Bay's burned off their second timeout, leaving them with just one right now. Here's Jay Novacek lined up at tight end right here. Keep an eye on him and let's see what he does. He's the guy they have to go to. It gets important. It gets critical. They're going to go to Jay Novacek. Plays off the linebacker. Feels the zone. Knows where the hole is going to be. Boy, that's got to be close. That is really close to he a got first it. down. He got it. First down indeed. Career high was able to make that nine receptions for Jay Novacek. He's got 11 today and a grand total of 120 yards. Now the mindset from the Dallas Cowboys standpoint shifts off of the pass. You now shift over to the run. You have three minutes and 17 seconds left. You've got a defense that only has one timeout left. 
you have got to run the ball and take the time off the clock. If Dallas does this right, Green Bay should never get back on the field with their offense. And again, just by way of repetition, Jay Novacek setting a new personal career high, 11 receptions. Previous high was nine. Smith on first down. Smith. Across the 40 to about the 41, gain of three as Green Bay burns off its last timeout with 3-11 remaining in the contest. Live from Milwaukee County Stadium, the home away from home for the Green Bay Packers, 56,000 on hand, and the Packers trailing the Cowboys by three. Dallas, full complement of timeouts remaining. The Packers, none. Like you said, James, three minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Green Bay has no timeouts. The clock will not stop again until the two-minute point. And don't expect Dallas, once it gets into a very long third down position, to put this ball in the air. And hey, if they do put it in the air, I'll give you three guesses who they're going to throw it to. <laughs> and if they can't cover Jay Novacek, knowing they're going to throw it to him, you know, well, as we mentioned before, Aikman certainly has the ability and the pension for spreading the ball around without any trouble. Aikman with all kinds of time and throws it complete near the first down mark. It looks to be good enough for the first down to Kmart. Kelvin Martin. Almost kind of a forgotten man now. And it is a first down. First down, and we're at 250 right now, so we get one more playoff before the two-minute warning here in the fourth quarter. I mentioned that Kelvin Martin, almost a forgotten man. The words used to describe him, smart, crafty, good possession receiver, but not utilized as often as previous. A lot of good talent in uh, Dallas right now at wide receiver, so you know, Kelvin Martin's in the uh, rent home by category uh, down there in Dallas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out of the eye formation, first and ten, Smith. And Smith with a good hard run up to about the 45, and he certainly is in the bye category. And he's definitely in the bye category, and right now, Green Bay has lost control of this football game. If they are to stay, if they have a chance to win this, Dallas is going to have to make a critical error. And Dallas and the Cow Dallas Cowboys and Jimmy Johnson have proven this year they have the ability to take a ball, go away and hide, and take a win. Infante staring at another close one that his Packers are involved in. He has no timeouts remaining. Dallas with the ball at the 46 of the Packers. And coming up next, it's the NFL Today postgame show. Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the league. Second and five, Smith. Stopped by Steven and company. And we're looking at third and five coming up here, and this is a very big play in this game. This is the play so far, because this is going to give Green Bay an opportunity to get the football back for their offense. And Brian Noble is down on the field, and he's holding that left knee. Those more cold-hearted individuals in this world would look at a situation like this and say possibly it's a fake fake injury going for a timeout, trying to get the clock stopped. Reminiscent of when Buddy Ryan was in Philadelphia and pulled the play. As a matter of fact, they even had a cart come on the field to get, um, I believe it was Andre Waters, if I'm not mistaken. But in that, in that situation, when you get a huge pile like that, injuries happen all the time to guys when they get inside. Now watch Brian Noble. He's right in here. He's going to be filling through to get the running back. Let's watch what happens. If anything happened to Brian, it had to, it had to happen early. Maybe it was in a leg whip, something that made him fall like that, but he's in obvious pain. So 
So when it's all settled out there, Lindy Infante will be watching the Cowboys in a third and five situation ball marked at the 46 of the Packers with 143 left in a game. Lindy Infante was telling us he stared at so many close games and looked at how many plays should have gone his way as we take a look at Hank Buller that one of his fans on his TV program thought that he should have some garlic hanging around his neck to try and help break the bad luck. Get that mojo work and get those bad spirits away. But if you're Hank Bulla in the Green Bay Packers defense, we talked about this earlier today, you take Novacek out, you take Irvin out, you make him throw it to Alfredo Roberts. You make him throw it, you know, to a, to a Johnston or somebody, and the Cowboys better hurry up here. Irvin to the near side for the Cowboys. Novacek in motion. Smith, the ball carrier, and Smith has the first down. So Emmett Smith with just the right amount of yardage, and guess who's celebrating the most? His best friend, yeah. Michael Irvin. As they say, James, stick a fork in them, they're done. That'll be it for the Green Bay Packers today, and Irvin and Everett Smith can get in the huddle right now and do a little celebrating. Well, Dallas has an opportunity to prove that it is, in fact, a strong team. Four of the next six in actuality, will be on the road. Dallas, one of four unbeaten road teams, including, well, at least going into today, the Redskins, Buffalo, and New Orleans. And you got to you got to look as Detroit and Houston as being the strong teams in those in those games coming up. And Troy Aikman, with 32 seconds remaining in the game, gets down in the position that Ken Stabler used to call win the game. The end of the ball game, the Packers lose it 20 to seven, and the Packers. Unfortunately, look at another close loss. Three games by a total of eight points. And Jimmy Johnson, meanwhile, moves ahead. His record improves to four and two. The best Dallas start since 1986. Jimmy Johnson's got to be happy with the way that whole Dallas Cowboy team played in the second half, recovered from that big kickoff by Charles Wilson for the touchdown and took control of the game on the ground and wore down Lindy and Fonny's Packers. So Jimmy Johnson's squad's first visit back here to Milwaukee since 1980, a victorious one. The final score, Dallas 20, Green Bay 17. Stay tuned for the NFL Today post-game show with all the scores and highlights from around the league.